shuttle crew is clearing the path for space travel for years to come. They'll deploy a tracking and data relay satellite. There's already one in orbit. And this second one will allow NASA to keep in contact with the shuttle virtually all the time. Future satellites will be designed based on what's learned during this mission. Astronaut Greg Jarvis will be running experiments to see if the amount of liquid fuel in a satellite, or the sloshing around of fuel, makes satellites less stable and thus unusable in orbit. There'll be plant experiments to learn more about growing food in space. Okay, we've come a long way from the Wright Brothers plane to the shuttle. And for the first time, a classroom in space. History teacher Krista McAuliffe will be making history herself as she teaches two classes from the orbiter. The first will be a televised field trip through the shuttle. The second, explaining the importance of exploring space. In addition, she'll be filming six other lessons to be shown to students when the shuttle returns to Earth. While most of the shuttle's work is aimed at the future, they'll also be paying some attention to the past, studying the creation of the universe by taking a closer look at Halley's Comet. Astronaut Judy Resnick will set a satellite outside the shuttle where it will study the vapors that create the comet's tail. After a couple of days of comet watching, the Spartan Halley satellite will be brought back in. But it won't be all work on this mission, at least if astronaut Ron McNair has anything to say about it. I'm gonna find me a window, perch in that window, grab me a camera, put my music on, and just watch the world go by. And that, the forecast is for several layers of cloud cover over the Cape tomorrow morning. NASA will not complete the fueling process unless the weather improves, even though that may mean postponing the launch until Monday. We'll sit on the ground until uh, we all believe it's uh, safe to launch. When they do get into space, the crew will deploy two satellites, one to help NASA communicate with orbiting shuttles and one to study Halley's Comet as it passes near the sun. This will be known forever as the teacher flight because President Reagan said back when he was seeking re-election, we ought to put a teacher in space. NASA agreed, spent 10 months trying to find the appropriate candidate, and because she is a civilian, a private citizen, she's drawn a lot more attention around here than the astronaut members of the crew. At this time, I'd like to introduce you or to a, perhaps the person you, you came to see, and that's uh, Krista McCullough, our payload specialist, teacher in space. <laughs> She is 37 and teaches history in a high school in Concord, New Hampshire. So she will here. conduct two lessons from space during the flight. I've been preparing these in September, and I just hope everybody tunes in on day four now to watch the teacher teaching from space. McAuliffe was selected over 11,000 teachers who applied for this mission. She's been showing her family around the office, the cargo bay, where she will work during the flight. NASA plans to take reporters and other non-astronauts on future flights, encouraged by the teacher's reaction to weightlessness. Oh, that's great! I love it! Steve ...is on its pad at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida five days behind schedule. Yesterday's planned liftoff was postponed because of bad weather. The forecast is favorable for launch today at 9.37 a.m. Eastern Time. Krista McAuliffe, a New Hampshire school teacher. More on the flight now in this report from Steve Delaney. Steve, good morning. Good morning, John. Two hours and 11 minutes from now, the Challenger will lift off if everything goes well, and there's now no indication that it won't go well. The uh, Challenger mission L-51 has been delayed a couple of times. There have been a lot of delays this month in the, in the space program, and it's manned uh, efforts to put the shuttles up and bring them back down again. And they're beginning to wonder now whether they're going to be able to make the planned uh, 15 launches that they have in mind for this year. Everything is beginning to slow down just a bit. But there are no technical and, uh, problems this morning. The crew is on its way out to the launch pad where they'll be loaded up and get ready to go. And as John mentioned, Krista McAuliffe is going to be uh, the star of this, uh, of this particular flight. The school teacher from New Hampshire is going to be delivering two lessons from space, one just a kind of a guided tour of the vehicle, and one concentrating on what we've all learned from the space program over the past uh, many years that it's been running here from Cape Canaveral. We'll be, um, we'll be watching it go in about two hours from now. There are no problems with the mechanics. There is some concern about the winds aloft, but apparently not enough to slow down the count. John? Thanks, Steve. Challenger carrying New Hampshire school teacher Krista McAuliffe among its crew of seven. McAuliffe planning to conduct two televised classrooms from the shuttle's orbiting classroom. Tanks of red and blue tinted water may provide new data that will make launching communications satellites cheaper and more efficient. 
The tanks are part of an experiment to see how liquid rocket fuel behaves in zero gravity. Hughes communications engineer Greg Jarvis will take the experiment into space. The equipment represents the fuel tanks of two types of satellites. During the experiment, Jarvis will move the models around in various ways to simulate what happens to a satellite in space. Backup payload specialist Bill Butterworth explains what they hope to learn. Here on Earth, as you can tell, the fluid's on the bottom of the tank because gravity's pulling it down and the bubble's up on the top. But in zero gravity, there is no up or down, so the, the fluid will tend to pull together into a globule because of surface tension. And the questions we're looking at are, where does that globule form in the tank? We're going to see how that is affected, one, by the, the amount of fluid in the tanks, and secondly, by shuttle maneuvers. For a company that develops and operates satellites, those answers are important for several reasons. Liquid rocket fuel burns more efficiently than solid, and it's more convenient to use. But the sloshing of the liquid, especially when the tank is not full, affects the satellite's center of gravity, and could throw it off course. It also affects how the fuel gets to the engines. Hughes officials hope that videotapes of Jarvis's experiments will help them use liquid rocket fuel more effectively. That would mean savings for the company, along with more far-reaching effects. Bruce Hall has the latest on today's high-tech, low comedy. We are going to scrub for today. And the confidence and, uh, in NASA's ability to maintain a launch schedule has been rocked by this series of embarrassing technical snafus and weather delays. Well, of course, it was just not our day. And it has not been NASA's month. In early January, it took seven attempts to get Columbia and her crew into orbit, and there were two delays getting them back. And this week's effort to get Challenger into orbit has turned into a comedy of errors. Sunday's launch was canceled when rain was predicted, but by lunchtime, the skies were clear and the weather ideal. NASA admitted they goofed. Today, the trouble started with the shuttle's door. The problem is that only one of the micro switches on the door indicates it's closed. Technicians tried to remove the door's handle, but failed because a small screw was stuck. So the call went out for a drill. When it finally arrived, 35 minutes later, the batteries were too weak to operate it. The proper drill has now arrived in the white room. And but the bit on the new drill crumbled. Finally, a hacksaw was brought in to cut off part of the handle. But by this time, the winds had picked up at both the launch pad and the emergency landing site. Currently, those winds are in excess of acceptable limits. After another two-hour wait, the seven weary astronauts climbed out of the shuttle and were told with NASA's tight 1986 schedule, they will try again tomorrow. But the forecast calls for freezing temperatures that could cause another postponement. Bruce Hall, CBS News, at the Kennedy Space Center. But this morning, the handle would not budge. Okay, uh, we got a problem on removing one of the screws on the milk stool. It seems to be... Uh, NASA workmen called for a power drill to unscrew the latch altogether. When the drill finally arrived an hour later, its batteries were dead. So the workmen finally decided to pull out a hacksaw. By the time the handle was sawed off, clouds and gusty winds had moved over the launch pad. Conditions unacceptable for liftoff. We have scrubbed the launch attempt for today. Despite the scrub, the crew, including schoolteacher Krista McAuliffe, were reported in good spirits but not the visiting school children from McAuliffe's hometown. I was disappointed. I was really mad that it didn't go off. NASA will try again for a launch tomorrow morning, but tonight a hard freeze is predicted that could damage water and fuel lines on the launch pad and further delay Challenger's liftoff. John Quinones, ABC News, the Kennedy Space Center. The space shuttle Challenger ran into still more problems, and that forced still another delay in efforts to put the first school teacher into space. The flight of Krista McAuliffe now has been put off five times. And NBC's Dan Molina reports tonight there are worries that it may be put off again tomorrow. In the end, it was a stiff Florida wind that kept Challenger on the launch pad today. Winds like this would have made an emergency landing very dangerous. It all started out well. Teacher Krista McAuliffe and her crewmates marched up to the launch pad in the pre-dawn hours. Up at Krista's school in Concord, New Hampshire, they crowded into the cafeteria to watch the big event on television. Then came the exasperating mishap. A handle attached to the outside of the shuttle's hatch had to be unscrewed and removed before takeoff as usual. Today, the threads of one screw were stripped.
The call went out for the tools any home handyman would use, a big drill and a hacksaw. They went through two drills, they broke a drill bit, finally they got the handle off, but by then the wind had kicked up. We are going to scrub for today and we'll be letting the crew out of the orbiter and they will go back to the crew quarters. The crowd at the launch pad left. As to the students up in New Hampshire... We're getting tired of it. <laughs> we wanted to hurry up and go up so you know, we can find out what it's going to be really like. Maybe we'll get out of more school <laughs> if it's not until Thursday. I think everybody's disappointed. All this after NASA canceled yesterday's scheduled launch because the weather forecast looked bad, but turned out fine. Now the plan is to press ahead with yet another try tomorrow, but sub-freezing temperatures are forecast, and that could cause all sorts of problems. Dan Molina, NBC News at the Johnson Space Center. The shuttle Challenger was set to launch a little after 8.30 Houston time. Members of the launch pad crew, including one who wore a mortarboard and tassel in honor of teacher Krista McAuliffe, greeted the astronauts as they boarded the shuttle shortly before 7. At that point, everything was going smoothly. Good morning, Krista, and have a fun flight. Even the weather at the Cape and at potential landing sites around the world seem to be cooperating. But the trouble began when the ground crew tried to close the hatch. The handle is supposed to come off after the hatch is sealed, only it did not. A bolt was screwed in too tightly and wouldn't budge. So began the frustration for the Challenger crew as ground crew members tried to get the bolt loose. We are working on it. The ground crew sent for a drill and a hacksaw. A half hour later, the drill arrived. But that only brought more frustration. It had a dead battery. After more waiting, the hacksaw arrived at the pad and the ground crew was finally able to remove the handle. But because of the delay, the shuttle Challenger had to wait again this time so that navigation equipment could be recalibrated to compensate for the later launch time. That took an hour, long enough for another problem at the Cape, weather. That left the astronauts sitting on the pad again. So we hope between now and one o'clock we'll get a good shot at it, but uh, it doesn't look promising at this moment. Strong winds swept to the Cape. Some gusts of more than 30 miles an hour were recorded. That is unacceptable for NASA because it is too rough for an emergency landing at the Cape if the shuttle should have to make an immediate return. And finally, the mission was called off for at least another day. We are going to scrub for today. The Challenger crew left the shuttle disappointed. There is some chance of a launch tomorrow, but at this point, it looks like Florida may be in for some record cold temperatures. That could cause yet another delay in the launch that will be decided tonight. Nancy Holland, 11 News. In Houston, Nancy Holland for CBS News. We're at Kennedy Space Center caused this morning's delay. You can probably tell the winds are still with us. In fact, they're picking up and the temperatures are beginning to fall. This is not typical Florida weather and this is not good news for NASA. What started off as really a beautiful day, all in all, when you consider it today, it has been a day that's been filled with plenty of disappointment. And the temperatures are only expected to be in the 20s tomorrow morning. The coldest they have ever launched a shuttle before tomorrow will be 40 degrees. So this will be the first time that NASA has attempted at launching a shuttle at, in sub-freezing temperatures. They're still hopeful, but they were hopeful again today. They said they'll just wait and see how the temperatures fall tonight and hope that there'll be some sort of warm-up by tomorrow morning. Reporting live from the Kennedy Space Center, I'm Liz Gonzalez. Let's go to Chris, who's at the Museum of Science, with more on the space shuttle program. Chris. On drill, NASA engineers repaired the door, but not before bad weather moved in once again. For the second time in as many days, NASA was at the mercy of Mother Nature. Another try is scheduled for tomorrow, a day predicted to be the coldest in Florida this season. Also, the major concern, other than getting the recycle completed in the time available, is the temperature. The weather forecast calls for us going below freezing at approximately midnight, dropping a degree to two degrees an hour until around sunrise and they're looking for a low temperature somewhere in the low 20s. 
The astronauts in Krista were naturally disappointed by the delay, but so were thousands who would come to witness the flight. Among the disappointed, third grade classmates of Krista's son, Scott. Well, I, I wish that they could have the launch, but they can't, and I just hope we can stay tomorrow, till tomorrow, see it. Well, I just don't feel like going home until I see the liftoff. That's what you came down for? Yeah. 